Is it the position of your administration that the references to jihad and Muslim and Islam in the 9-11 Commission report were somehow offensive or bigoted? So our, my organization's position is that training materials as well as intelligence products that were produced by the FBI are not only offensive and inflammatory and alienating uh, Muslims and American Muslims, but more importantly, they make us less safe. Um, and, and the reason they make us less safe is that I think if what the tragedies, the recent tragedy, tragedies have shown us, including in Orlando, is that we need law enforcement more than ever focusing on finding the needles in the haystack. And by broadly painting an entire faith community um, with a, a, a broad brush of suspicion, we're actually dumping more hay onto the haystack and making law enforcement's job more and difficult. Mr. If, Mr. If, if I may, if Mr. I could Mr. just Mr. give an Mr. example. With, with, with respect, I, I would like to ask you to just answer the specific question I asked, which is, is it your organization's position that the 126 references to jihad by the 9-11 Commission were somehow offensive or bigoted? The, let, let, let me, uh, I, I, I want to make it clear, uh, Mr. Chairman, that our concern is about not just terminology, but it's about what these materials are communicating. So it's not just about using the word jihad or Muslim, but it's, it's what it's communicating to agents and what it's communicating so to the general you public. So you don't think it was bigoted to use jihad? I just want to understand your organization's position, whether or not it is bigoted to use the word jihad. So this, this, is when I, this is when I think it's problematic. I think it's when we have public officials, whether it's members of Congress, members of the administration, who are going out and describing the problem as a problem of jihad or a problem of radical Islamic terrorism. That's a problem because it's actually playing in to the propaganda frame of ISIS, and it makes us less safe because ISIS wants this to be a war against Islam. And by using religiously loaded terminology like jihad, we're playing into their into their mindset. And it would be, I might add, it's 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 it would it's 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 not only that, but it's also just grossly inaccurate. I think we need to call the threat what it is. It's ISIS, it's Al Qaeda, and it's no different than the KKK or those who attack abortion clinics. We wouldn't go and say there's a problem with radical Christianity or radical. Christian terrorism, we call the threat what it is. It's the KKK. It's those who are attacking women's health clinics. So, Ms. Kara, I, I will note that, I, that I've asked you now twice if, you're, if your organization has the view that the 9-11 Commission report was bigoted or offensive, and, and twice you have declined to answer that pretty straightforward question. So let me try it a different direction. Oh, well, maybe I didn't understand your question pro uh, pro uh, properly, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the use of the term in general by the 9-11 Commission report, I don't think is, is problematic in itself. I think it's in general as officials are talking about what the threat is. I think that's what, th that's what the threat, that's what my concern is. Well, so, well, if it wasn't a concern, then why would it be purged from 126 down to 0, 0, 0, 0? I can't explain at, the, at the administration's. Of your I, I can't. Uh, I, I obviously cannot speak for the administration and these government agencies that did that, um, and, and what their thinking was, and, and developing those but documents. They did but so what in I can say, in response to a request from your organization in writing, calling for a quote purge. We asked for a purge of bigoted training materials. That's what we called for. Well, let me try it a different direction. On March 16, 2015, the Long Island Press quoted. Glenn Catan, who is the legal director for your organization, as saying, quote, like, what are you going to do about radicalization in the Muslim community? That's nonsense. There is no such thing. I'm curious, do you agree with the legal director of your organization that there is no such thing as radicalization in the Muslim community? Well, th this is what we do believe, Mr. Chairman, what we believe, and this is based on attacks we've seen in our country in just the last year alone, whether it's the Orlando shooting, the attack on a women's health clinic, the attack at the AME church in Charleston, South Carolina, we know that extremist violence takes many forms and people motivated regardless of their race, religion, or ideology. And what we also know is that there's no, uh, there's no pathway, so to speak, 
to, to get to that point of engaging in violence. What the national security and law enforcement experts say is that there's, it's, the common thread that you see is vulnerable individuals who are seeking a sense of purpose. And um, so we, we totally disabuse and, and do not believe in this canard that there's somehow a pathway to radicalization. Uh, and that's what numerous studies have shown as well. So I want to give you just one more opportunity to answer the question directly, because I don't believe you did. Do you agree with your legal director who said, quote, there is no such thing as radicalization in the Muslim community? There are violent individuals in all communities, including the Muslim community, but there is there is it connected to any ideology? It's there are some people who uh, where there is ideology that's a part, but ideology is not the center or even part of the center of the causation um, for what ca causes people to engage in violence. And it's not just me that's saying that, it's, it's experts like my colleague, Mr. German, and law enforcement and national security experts who say that. So I'm just that, gonna give you one more opportunity to, to say whether yes or no you agree with the legal director that there's there, no such thing as radicalization in the Muslim community. Uh, as, I'll, as I'll note for the direct record, Senator Durbin apparently doesn't want you to answer that question. <laughs> I would like you to show the courtesy of this witness instead of badgering her. Thank you, Mr. Senator Chairman. Durbin. You've been very courteous. <laughs> well, you know, I'd like an administration Chairman. that shows the courtesy to the victims of radical Islamic terrorism and doesn't edit a 9-11 call from a terrorist who's murdering 49 people in Orlando and pretending the threat doesn't exist.